Alright, so in this video we're going to be talking about Narcan administration. So the thing that we're concerned about with opioid overdoses is specifically that the medication or the drug that they've taken is affecting their chemoreceptors to the point that it's suppressing their respiratory drive to where they can no longer breathe on their own. One of the things that we're uh, concerned about in terms of uh, patient presentation would be obviously that respiratory depression, but there's some other signs like pinpoint pupils, an altered mental status, just more signs that the parasympathetic uh, nervous system is taking over. Um, in terms of on-scene clues, obviously we're going to be looking for any sort of um, opioid medications, potentially empty uh, pill bottles, as well as drug paraphernalia, you know, burnt spoons, uh, hypodermic needles all over the place. Um, those on-scene clues would help uh, enforce your opinion that this might be uh, an opioid overdose. Once we've determined that the patient may be experiencing an opioid overdose, we've got to kind of look at their presentation in terms of their respiratory rate. Uh, per San Diego County Protocol S123, which is our altered neurological function, a respiratory rate less than 12, along with that suspected opioid overdose, would be when we're giving the Narcan. Um, but if they're still maybe altered, maybe there are some signs of a drug overdose, but the respiratory rate's above 12, it's not indicated to give. It's not necessarily needed at that point. Obviously, we'd be reassessing uh, throughout the rest of the assessment on the call to make sure that it doesn't drop, but um, we wouldn't be giving it until it drops below uh, 12 respirations per minute. Now, let's say that we've come up to our patient, they're altered, they've got those pinpoint pupils, respiratory depression, bystanders on scene are saying they have a history of heroin use, we're seeing all the drug paraphernalia at scene. It's kind of sounding like an opioid overdose to you and your partner. Um, we take a look at their uh, vital signs and they've got a respiratory rate of four, kind of agonal and effective. Um, we'd probably be looking at giving Narcan for that because it'd definitely be indicated. So we'd move on to administering our Narcan. Now in the county, we've got two different types of Narcan that we can give. We've got like our standard preload syringes, which would be what you'd see on most ambulances. But there's also the more so civilian Narcan, um, which comes in a four milligram preload versus the two milligram preloads that most would carry. Um, either one we can administer. Um, the routes are exactly the same. Administration is slightly different, but uh, we'll get into talking about the, uh, the preload. All right, so when we actually get into setting up for the administration of Narcan, one of the first things we want to do with any time we have any sort of medication is our five rights, right? So this is the right patient because it's, it's the right indication, right? This is an opioid overdose, so this is the right patient for this medication, which is Narcan. Um, so we've got our first two five rights there. Um, the route for this is going to be IN, intranasal. Uh, it's two milligrams per two mLs. And uh, if you look on the expiration, you're both going to see it on the actual uh, uh, box for the medication as well as the vial for the medication, so you can check that. This medication actually expired February of 2017, but for our purposes, let's say that it's all good to go and the five rights count. So to actually connect this Narcan preload syringe, again, it's used Narcan, but just go ahead and imagine with me that we've got a couple safety caps here. We pop those off. And then this just, along with any other preloaded syringe, screws into itself. Make sure you don't push down on it. You want to just kind of secure it so that it's all good to go. Now we take this cap off and we move to our other piece of equipment that we need to give this. So in order to give this medication IN, intranasal, we're going to need what's called a MAD, a mucosal atomizer device. So this is how they come. It's got a 3cc syringe attached to it that we don't actually need because our medication is already in this vial. So we just unscrew the actual device from the syringe, set that off to the side, and then we'd reattach the device onto our Narcan, and there we go. We're good to give our Narcan. Okay, so now that we're actually ready to give our Narcan, we want to position our patient in the best way possible to receive that Narcan. So obviously it's going to go inside the nostrils. Uh, we're going to aim for the nasal mucosa where it's actually going to be absorbed. So we're going to ever so slightly put their um, head tilted backwards, that way the Narcan's more likely to be involved. And the way that we would deliver this Narcan is one milligram in each nostril. So one milligram is one ml. So you'd very rapidly push the first ml. Now speed is important on this because you need to have enough pressure to actually atomize the material. So we give the first ml in one nostril, the second ml in the other nostril. We'd wait a little bit, see if it's effective. Obviously, if we still need to ventilate our patient, we'd be doing it then. Um, 
the most important thing though is to make sure that you would give this medication quickly um, in a rapid succession. That way um, it's actually able to atomize and properly be delivered. If it's given too slow, it's just going to kind of dribble out, go to the back of the throat, and it's not going to be used at all.